Okay. So uh, as I have explained, I have taken a case that is a National Furniture Mart. And through that case, I have explained the concept of identification of the problem. And through that identification of the problem, we have identified all the relevant things that are to be used for the model. So all the core, core features have been identified. Let me share uh, that whiteboard again uh, for the better reference. So here, uh, this is a case that um, uh, the core things is number one, uh, what is, uh, that is related to the manufacturing combination that are to be converted into decision variable. The second is related to the objective of the national furniture mark or the objective of the hearse, that is the expected profit or things related to the profit. And the third essential thing or the third core feature are related to the uh, utilization or the uh, limitations imposed by some resources which are limited in nature. In the planning, only the limited resources are being considered. So this is the thing that has been taken care of. So here, this case is taken care of. Now, uh, if, uh, if you observe this, uh, uh, this mathematical model, though they are the function, uh, these are the mathematical symbols and they are the functions. So if we consider them, right, so they are the function. But if we observe uh, uh, these functions, means apart from this decision variable, here the degree of T is one, right? Uh, in the degree of C is again one. So in the objective function, both the uh, means all the decision variables or the variables are having degree one. So it is linear in nature. So it is linear in nature. In the same manner, if we consider all the constraints and restrictions, like this is the first function, this is the second function, this is the third function, this is the fourth and this is the fifth function. All are again linear in nature, right? So this is an important thing that here the mathematical functions or the algebraic function that are to be used are uh, we are using uh, as linear functions only. So these things are to be kept in mind since we are moving to the second part of our discussion. Okay, so uh, okay, so by this concept we have explained our OR model. All this concept that has been discussed are taken care of. Right? Now we move to the further part. Uh, uh, here I am explaining what do we mean by linear programming problem, which in short is better known as LPP, right? So here, uh, since this is a mathematical modeling approach, this is an approach of using OR modeling. And here, since we are using mathematical symbols, so this is actually OR mathematical modeling approach. This is a mathematical modeling approach. As uh, in the last example, we have observed that all the functions are linear in nature. So here again, all functions in the model are linear functions, means two functions are involved. One is the objective function. In this case, our objective function is single, and we have a set of constraints and restrictions. So these, all these functions are having degree one. So they all are linear in nature. All linear in nature means all the decision variables or the variables that are used in the functions are linear in nature. So in, in linear programming problem, we have two words. One is related to linear. Linear is that all the functions of the models are linear functions. And the second part is related to the programming. 
programming is not necessarily a computer programming here programming is an synonymous of planning so it is related to planning of activity or plan of action for an optimal result so we are going to solve that model while we why we are going to solve that model we want to plan our activities plan our activity means just like in the example we try to decide the manufacturing level of tables and manufacturing labels of chair right so we want to plan this right and we plan uh, uh, this uh, these are the things these are the activities that are to be planned they are the competing activities they are to are to plan and for the optimal means we try to maximize our profit as per the situation so it is related to the programming so this uh, the problem that we have discussed that include that those as assumptions we will discuss the assumptions in the later part also so that constitute the linear programming so here uh, i have explained the general lpp form the first uh, essential thing the or the essential component of any or model are the decision variables that we try to determine so these are our decision variables so suppose we have taken n decision variable in our case n is actually 2 so this is xj is actually the n tuples and the value of j is from 1 to n then we have an objective function that we try to optimize this is a linear function of um, decision variables along with some objective function coefficients here cis are known as objective functions coefficient they would be constant or the known in nature and here z is a linear function on the real dimensional space so this would be c1x1 plus c2x2 plus cjxj and cnxn in our case we will have the objective function as maximize z that is 200 uh, into t plus 150 into c so this is the objective function then we have constraints or restrictions and these uh, as in our case we have um, around the five constraints right we have five constraints so these constraints are actually the functional constraints because they impose condition on the functions of the system they are the functional constraints right as you observe here the objective function is a function of decision variable as well as the constraints are again the functions of decision variables and in all the cases the decision variables are having degree 1 here all the right and here aijs aijs are actually the input output coefficients they are the input output coefficients that are the that represent the utilization part of the system so they are the input output coefficient and uh, they are multiplied with a one degree with all the decision variables and then they are having an let me again explain this concept there is some break right? so let me again explain the concept right? it is related to the linear programming problem that we are going to discuss in short this is known as lpp this is a mathematical modeling approach uh it is actually the or modeling approach that we are going to use and uh, since uh, we have using the mathematical concept so this is the or mathematical modeling approach 
is there. Um, here, uh, there are two terms. One is linear, other is uh, uh, programming. Problem is just related to decision-making problems. Problem is related to decision-making, actually. Right? So linear, uh, here the first word is linear, means all functions in the model, whether it is an objective function or the, or the, all the constraints, all are linear in nature, where the decision variables are uh, in the degree one only. And then programming is related to the planning of activities or plan of action so that we get an optimal result. So this here, the planning is related to the manufacture, deciding the manufacturing level of tables and chair. So these are the activities, these are the competing activities on which some action is to be taken care of or plan, they are to be planned for some action. So we try to uh, we our uh, here we our purpose is to find out the manufacturing level of these activities, and here our goal or the measure of optimality is we try to maximize the profit, and accordingly, uh, just like uh, in the previous uh, case, uh, we will have a general LPP format also. The first uh, component of our problem are the decision variables that we try to determine. So these are the end decision variables. We take tables n. Actually, in our situation, we have decision variables. Uh, only two decision variables are there. So the end tuples. Then we have an objective function. These objective functions are the linear functions of decision variables, where we use uh, objective function coefficients as the, the coefficients or the parameters. And this z is a linear function on a real uh, space. Right. So this uh, we try to optimize. In this case, here we maximize. Right? These are the linear functions. Okay. So it can also be written as optimize Z as summation of Cj, Xj, where J varies from 1 to n. So this is our objective function, and this function is linear in nature. Then we have constraints. So these are the constraints here. Uh, I have explained that uh, they are the two type of constraints. The first one are the functional constraint. They are the limitations imposed on the real system. They are the limitations imposed on the real system. And then we have non-negativity restrictions. So like uh, in our case, we have five fun uh, functional constraints. And uh, these functional constraints are the linear functions of uh, decision variables again, where on the left side we have used coefficient aij. So aij, aijs are input output coefficients, where i varies from 1 to m. In our case, there are five constraints, so i varies from 1 to n, and obviously j is varying from 1 to n. And in our case, we have um, we have only two decision variables, right? So the value of J is only two only, right? So these are the constraints that are in the form of either greater than or equals to or equals to or less than equals to as the case would be. And here we have B I's also. Here we have B I's also. So these B I's are the limitations imposed. So they represent the limited amounts, limitations imposed or the limited resources that represents the limitations imposed. Okay, so the, this constitute our typical general uh, LPP model. So this is the uh, broad description of the OR model that uh, we are going to use for our, our uh, future discussion. So this is the broad LPP model. So, uh, since uh, uh, we are uh, uh, going for the, the linear programming, so there are certain assumptions, certain implicit assumptions that are there uh, when we plan or when we program or when we develop our OR model. So we will discuss what are the assumptions that we have made while developing an LPP model. So this is, these are the assumptions that we used implicitly in developing an LPP model or the OR model. So the first assumption is related to proportionality. 
as we have mentioned that uh, the profit remaining the same means profit from the table always remains constant at 200 means if we draw a curve if we draw a graph between t and the profit uh, from the table then there will be a straight line right because every table is giving a profit of uh, 200 means our profit from table are proportional to number of tables right where exponent or the constant is the amount right so this is known as proportionality so this this condition is first imposed on the objective function same like when we consider the functional constraint like uh, when we consider the wood condition the wood condition is a table utilizes five unit of wood right? means how many tables would be manufactured it, it is immaterial uh, uh, with respect to number of tables that are to be manufactured always always the wood used utilized in per unit table would be five so the wood utilized so the wood utilized in tables would be proportional to number of tables only. So this condition is imposed on objective function as well as on the functional constraint. So it simply says that contribution of each activity is proportional to level of activity. Here the con contribution is the profit or the wood, right? right? And the level of activity are the number of tables, right? So it means that ind uh, individually it is employed that the contribution of individual activity is proportional to the level of activity. Right? So when uh, uh, suppose we are so this is the first condition, first assumption that are implicit in uh, our planning. That is the that is the proportionality assumption. Now we come to the second assumption. We have mentioned that the total profit is total profit is two hundred t plus 150c. So 200t is from the proportionality assumptions when we are considering that uh, individual activity of uh, manufacturing of table. And 150c has come from uh, the case uh, of proportionality assumption when it is imposed on manufacturing number of chairs. So they are the individual contribution. The first one is the individual contribution from the table and the second one are the individual contribution from the second. And then we put a addition sign in between them, right? In the same manner, when we consider the wood utilization, wood utilization is again, we use the constraint as 5T plus 2C that is less than or equals to 5,000. So we are considering the left-hand side of the functional constraint. We are considering the left-hand side. In the first case also, we have considered the left-hand side of the functional constraint. So again, we have put a sign of plus. So this uh, condition, plus means additivity. Minus is also a part of uh, this thing. 